Greetings synth cadets, gear junkies and general misfits. I've got something very interesting for you today. The Soma Cosmos, drifting memory station. <laughs> now what the hell's a drifting memory station? I hear you ask and I thought the same thing. But when Soma contacted me and asked me did I want to check it out, I was firstly very intrigued by the name and then the concept. You know, they've got some real balls this company. They're making some very interesting things that think outside the box. And the idea of this is to induce a meditative state through music. It's effectively a looper that you can't loop to your own timing, which is obviously bizarre. But it's the idea behind it is that it drifts out of time with itself. It starts repeating and then it's got these delay lines that drift out of each other and they blur together and create this beautiful wash of sound. There's a few different modes and there is also a different firmware addition which you can easily plug in and then you can make it rhythmic so it's more like a traditional looper. You can do rhythmic stuff with it. But I'm intrigued by this uh, meditative idea, you know, because I'm a real believer in the therapeutic and cathartic qualities of music. Many the time, you know, when I've had a real bad experience, I sit at the piano for half an hour and I feel a hell of a lot better. And I'm sure a lot of you have experienced that same feeling. So I think this is the sort of thing if, if the world's been beating you up, you know, you can just decamp your studio and spend an hour on this and all your troubles will just melt away into this glorious sonic soundscape that this thing will provide for you. Okay, so you've got four modes here, two delay lines, three delay lines, whatever that is, lots of delay lines, and granular. And each one has three settings. And delays, it's like short, medium, and long. So the most simple one is a short two delay lines. Now you can hear these two sounds are now drifting out with each other. And if I put blur up, they're gonna start feeding into each other, and really drifting. Talking of drift, put that on. This gives you some sort of modulation that just blurs it even more, basically. Okay, so you end up with this kind of thing that you can then put another layer on. You can unblur the sounds as well, but the drift is permanent once it's on. You've got drive here, which gives you a nice little distortion. I've been tending to use it on all the time because it sounds really lovely. Now I can reverse that. I can go into a different mode and it'll still keep playing although it kind of dips and then goes into the next bit. What I find to do in that situation, if you want to move, is take out a record and just improvise over the top to cover. Over here, you've got this one, suppressor and compressor. The suppressor, basically, anything new that you record will be loud and the earlier stuff will get pushed back, which is quite handy, to be honest, because obviously it can become very cacophonous very quickly. I tend to use it mostly in that mode. And then compressor is the opposite. It will bring out all the background stuff and what you play in will be less impactful. Beautiful sounding. Feedback, if you've got it at one, it'll just continue forever. Back it off, then it will start to fade off. And sometimes, you know, as I say, these things get, they build up too much and you need to back it off. So you have to be able to control that sometimes. With a combination of these two things, you can keep it under control. 
If you press and hold the record for five seconds, there you go, it will go down an octave and half speed. Then anything you record at, at that speed, if you go back, it will be double. You've got filters here, a low pass and a high pass, which are useful again. They're characterful in, in themselves. There's a couple of different settings. Okay, so that's basically it. That's with two lines. I like it with four sounds nicer for me. You don't always have to record on top. It's just gorgeous, you know, it is very, very beautiful sounding. I can lo-fi that now. Now I've got a lot of control if I want to start messing around a bit. Now let's go on to the big mode. This is like a big reverb. So it'll still continue, which is cool. And if I have this suppressor up quite high, it will clear things out. It'll start to clear things out for me. Very nice, um, and let's go over to the granular now. This takes on different settings now to do with moving the grains. If you don't know what granular is, by the way, it's basically cutting up audio into tiny pieces, and then they sort of move around and jitter, and you get this very lovely shimmery kind of effect. Just straight away, lovely, isn't it? And I can mess around with the shape of these grains. It's kind of hard to hear it on the small setting, actually. I'm gonna go into the big setting.
So you're stuck now in one little corner, which is quite cool sometimes because you can So there you go, that's basic modes. Um, it's stereo input, by the way, but you can also have it dual mono, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna check that out. I'm gonna play maybe an EP with a Moog or something like that and just uh, see what it's like with two different sound sources simultaneously. I'm just gonna jam around then for a bit on it and then I'm gonna load in the rhythmic mode as well and show you that quickly.